Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. So there's not much news out there today, so just a little bit on Dogecoin, and uh, we're going to talk about BitFarm's Q2 earnings. I found something interesting on it where I think they made a mistake. We'll get into it, but first let's get into the charts here. So Bitcoin is right now trading at 46,776. It is obviously up from its low yesterday, where it was at 45,300. Um, and it is bouncing back up, which is good to see. I still think there is a possibility that we may go down uh, and test the 50-day moving average, which right now is hovering at about 40,250 mark right around there. So we'll have to keep an eye on this one. Uh, let's take a look at Doge. We have a story about Doge here, um, uh, about when it might possibly moon. Uh, moon. So Doge is right now at 33 cents. Uh, it is obviously up from its low yesterday at 31 cents. It had a high of 35 cents. And the RSI is looking good. Looks like we got room to run a little bit more. Stellar, same thing. Stellar is up at 37, almost 38 cents right now, down from its low of yesterday of 35 cents, 35 and a half cents. RSI is down nicely, so we have obviously some more room to run. Hope to keep an eye on that one as well. Litecoin, Litecoin is at 183 right now. Uh, RSI is down, it is above the 200 and the 50 day moving average. Down from a low yesterday of 173 roughly, um, and down, or up from 173, and then down from a high of 188. It is trading in this kind of pattern here a little bit around the 183 mark um, obviously we're looking for a breakout above that uh, to continue the bull run here Cardano Cardano has obviously pulled back as well it is at right now at two dollars and nine cents uh, it was trading as low as two dollars and three cents and as high as uh, 224 uh, just a day or so ago so we'll keep an eye on that one as well and then Ethereum, Ethereum is stuck in this kind of range here between the 33.25 and the 3100 range. Um, so we, we're looking, obviously, for something where it's going to pull up above it uh, and then Catalyst to go up higher from there. Uh, let's take a look at some of the mining stocks. Hive is uh, down. Obviously, we're still waiting on the earnings report from them. That's supposed to come at the end, towards the end of the month. Hopefully, they don't postpone it again. Uh, yesterday closed at 295, but it's in the pre-market uh, down two cents at 293. Marathon Digital uh, yesterday closed at 33 dollars. It is uh, at 33.33 right now, so it's up 33 cents pre-market. Bitfarm, we'll look into Bitfarm's earnings. Um, I think I found a mistake where they made on the report. Um, we'll have you guys take a look at it, see if you guys agree or if I made a mistake there someplace. Uh, so. Bit Farms closed yesterday at 641. Pre market is still at 641. Coinbase is down, uh, probably because of Bitcoin was down a little bit yesterday. So it was down 256.68. And then pre market is up 265.55. So up about. Uh, doesn't make any sense. Pre market is showing down negative 13 cents, but it's showing up here. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. All right, so let's get into our first story here. Our first story is with Dogecoin. So when Dogecoin moon, on-chain data and trading net and volume suggests soon. Uh, let me see here. There it is. So three, uh, let's zoom this in a little bit for you guys. Three reasons analysts and traders are developing a more bullish outlook for Doge include increased on-chain activity, rising trading volumes on top exchanges, and increasing attention from big name influencers. Two of those being uh, Elon Musk and Mark Cuban. So here's a tweet from Philip uh, Gradwell. On-chain on -chain, Doge is being adopted by new investors at a level not seen since the late 2017 bull market, with new investors increasing their share of supply from 9% in July 2020 to 25% in August 2021. So that's good news there. That's one of those. We can see the data here. Uh, and there's a tweet, and then uh, Pentoshi also tweeted, uh, there have been some massive buyers, 200 million USD a day of Doge and volume on Coinbase alone, direct fiat on-ramp starting a week ago, 
while I'm not trading it to a dollar plus, I do think we will get there. My goal is 40 to 45 cents. So we're seeing the buys coming in as well. And then we got Mark Cuban talks the benefits of Dogecoin. The third reason for the bullish sentiment surrounding Dogecoin is recent commentary from big name influencers such as Mark Cuban, who is once again touting the benefits of Dogecoin as payment rail to, to his legion of Twitter followers. Here's Mark Cuban's tweet. Uh, the point about Doge that people miss is that Doge, Doge's imperfections and simplicity are its greatest strengths. You can only use it to do two things, bend it or hodl it. Both are easy to understand and it's cheap to buy, which makes it a, co a community anyone can, can join and enjoy. And that is true. And then Cuban also tweeted, I don't shield Doge. I shield the products and services of my companies where we allow people to pay in any crypto. 95% of the sales are in Doge. Oh, that's actually quite interesting. And that's, that's a huge uh, market share, obviously, for payments there. Customers choose to use Doge. We can argue anything and everything and anything regarding BTC, but right now Doge is the people's way to pay. Um, yeah, I mean, Doge is still relatively inexpensive. It's at, what is it, 20 some odd cents, or it's actually 33 cents right now. So it makes it easier for people to use and buy. And then we have rising on-chain activity and 24-hour exchange volumes along. With the return of Doge promotions by popular inf influencers, has Dogecoin primed to possibly see its second bull market rally in 2021? Which is kind of what we're seeing with pretty much all the cryptos right now, especially uh, Bitcoin. We think Bitcoin might go up higher from here. Um, so let me know in the comments down below, where do you think uh, Dogecoin is going to go? Do you think it's going to go to a dollar plus or is it going to be under a dollar by the end of the year? All right, and finally, let's get into BitFarms. So BitFarms, I took a pretty long, hard look into this, uh, and then I think I found a mistake here. I will point this out to you guys. So BitFarms, uh, here's their results. So cash on hand, uh, or cash, current assets is 36.2 million um, as of June 30th. In December, we had 5.9, almost 6 million. So that is a nice, huge increase in the amount of cash that they're holding right now. Digital coins or digital assets coins held is at 45 million, three, uh, 329,000 compared to nothing a year ago. That is great to see. That is a huge increase. So that is a great positive for the stock. Uh, current total current assets are 85.7 million compared to only 9 million a year ago. Nice, huge increase as well. So total assets has increased almost four times to uh, 231 million, 224, uh, and then last year they had only 51.7 million. So they're going in the right direction, they're doing the right things, growing their assets, uh, in installing new miners, buying new miners, and getting those installed. Uh, total current liabilities went down from last year, 21.3 million compared to 28.47 million. And then total liabilities went down almost, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Six million from uh, thirty-six million two hundred fifty-seven thousand a year ago to thirty million two hundred ninety-six thousand this year. And then here is where I think I might have caught a mistake that they did. Obviously, this is a uh, unaudited interim uh, condensed consolidated statements of profit, so they may catch this in a couple of days or whenever they're they're doing their audits. But here's what I think I found. So if we look at it, I'll give you guys the part where I think it's made a mistake. So gross profit, uh, revenues obviously were up uh, 36.687 million compared to 7.372 million. So that is a huge win for them. It's a great uh, increase in that. Obviously the price of Bitcoin has gone up a lot from 2020 to 2021. Uh, we were looking at probably around 40 some thousand, 50 thousand dollars per coin during this uh, period. Cost of sales obviously increased a little bit. Uh, about twice of what it was last year to 13.32 million and uh, from 7.56 million last year. So gross profit loss, which is actually uh, profit this time around is 23.3 million compared to 134,000 uh, loss last year. So general admi administrative and expenses, sales, travel, et cetera, was at 10.6 million compared to 13.4 million. Uh, for the six months and 1.3 million from the quarter last year. Obviously that's a huge, almost eightfold increase. So I think whether they're paying themselves more or getting more people 
involved. That's probably why you're seeing that increase there. So here's where the mistake happens, or at least I think I, the mistake happened. So loss on reevaluation of digital assets, if we look at it, they have it at 14.885 million. But in the explanation in the note four, I saw that it was 21.862 million. So if we jump in to where that note is, so here's that note. So here for the three months ended, they have 21.862 million. But for the six months ended, they have the 14.885 which is what they used on that line there, which if we go back to it here. So you can see it here. Let's see if we can point this out. So they used that line here for the six months and the six months here, which is, I believe, incorrect. They should have used the 21.862 mark. So if that's the case, total operating income obviously is going to increase uh, quite a bit from the reported 2 million uh, loss to a loss of nine million just for that part right there and then if you add it all up together uh, net loss before income taxes was now going to be ten million uh, forty eight thousand uh, total debt or net loss is now ten million six hundred fifty two thousand and then total comprehensive loss is fifteen point seven eight million compared to the eight point eight that they reported and the basic diluted net loss per share is negative 10 cents instead of negative 2 cents. So I think I did this correctly based on the data that they provided in the uh, note 4. But let me know if I made a mistake here, but I don't think I did. If I did make a mistake, I'm sorry. That was obviously not my intention, but it looks like they might have made a, made a mistake here. So based on that, we're sh showing that they had a loss of 10 cents instead of loss of 2 cents, which is uh, almost two and a half times the loss from last, peri last period last year, or the same period last year. So basic and diluted weight of average number of shares is 151 million compared to 84 million. So they also obviously diluted the shareholder value a little bit, uh, almost twice that from last year, because obviously they're buying the miners and things like that and using that capital to expend their operations. Okay. <coughs> What else do we have here? That was interesting. Net cash re uh, related to investing activities, uh, 102 million, down 102 million or negative 102 million. And that's mostly from minor purchases and things like that. Cash at the end of the period was 36,216, which is a nice increase. And this is for the six months ended. So that was a good increase over the prior six months from last year. So we're good there. Where is the other part of it? And then here again, here's that note four that we saw just a little bit ago. So here's the numbers, obviously the 21.862 million right here, and then the 14.8, which uh, was used on the six months and the three months. So this is where I think the mistake happened. Bitcoin mined was 759 for the period, which equates to an average price of 46,577. So Bitcoin's price right now is, let's see here. Bitcoin is at 47,000, so based on the average for that period, they are above where the price was at then, so that's a good sign. Um, they at least don't have a negative on that. All right, let's go back to here. Here's what else I calculated from this. Um, so they were mining about 8.43 BTC per day, so I just used 90 days for the calculation based on 759. And then based on how many coins are basically generated during the day, which is around 900 because of the 6.25 uh, block reward, you end up with them having a 0.009% BTC mi uh, mining market share. So based on that information, they're at 0 0.09 on my calculations. Uh, we'll have to see if this obviously improves over time, but I think it will with the new miners coming on board. We'll also take a look into whether the difficulty gets out of whack uh, or goes up way too high too fast because everybody's installing miners. So we'll see if they can maintain that or improve that to be above 1% to maybe 2% of the total mining market share out there. Uh, what else was there? Reevaluation. So that's part of the mistake that I think they made here. And let's see what else do we have. 
additions during, okay, so these are the miners that they added on. So this is good to see. They almost installed uh, 8,000 miners. They installed a total of 7,961 new miners for the period, which is great. That's going to give them a lot more hash, uh, hash rate power. They did have some miners that went bad. Uh, they got rid of 14 of the, one of the Bitmain miners um, went bad. And that's normal, you know, the miners do burn out. Okay, long-term deposits, equipment, prepayments, and commitments. So security deposits for rent, energy, and insurance was at 1.1 million. Equipment prepayments was 73 million. So this is where those are used for the purchasing of new miners. So I wanted to read this really quick here because I thought this was important. Uh, the company placed deposits on B BVVE in the amount of 73 million. 373,000. These deposits are mainly for the orders placed on 7,300 N miners and 48,000 Watts miners with expected delivery in late 2021 and 2022, respectively, as well as uh, 1,500 Watts miners uh, delivered in July 2021. The company is exposed to counterparty risks through its significant deposit it places with suppliers of mining hardware to secure orders and delivery dates. The risk of a supplier uh, failing to meet its contractual obligations may result in late deliveries or long term. Deposits and equipment prepayments that are not realized. So there are some challenges, obviously, with the shipping channels right now. Everything has just gotten so expensive to ship from overseas via uh, shipping vessels. And there's a bunch of delays. And then we'll have to obviously see, see what the virus does, whether it shuts down ports or companies, things like that. So there could be an adverse effect of that on the company's potential to earn money in the future, or at least in a short term. Short term. The company attempts to uh, mitigate the ri this risk by procuring mining hardware from established suppliers with whom it maintains strong relationships. The company orders uh, mining, hardware mining hardware are with two of the largest mining hardware manufacturers in the world and with whom the company has maintained relationships relations for several years. The table below outlines the company's remaining payments obligations connection with in connection with purchase agreements described above. So here are their payments when they're supposed to be due. So it's all 176800000 for those miners. Um, obviously, they're buying a lot, almost, what is it, over 55,000 miners. Uh, so that is a lot. Here's the kind of concerning part of it. The company will require additional sources of financing to meet the payment obligations, including in the table above. The company were unable to obtain such finan financing or the Bitcoin price and network difficulty were adversely impacted, then the company may have difficulty meeting its payment obligations. If the company were unable to meet its payment obligations, the counterparty to the contracts may result in the loss of any equipment, prepayments, and deposits paid by the company under the purchase agreement. <coughs> Excuse me, remedial legal measures against the company, which made, may include seeking damages and forced continuance of the contractual agreement. Under these circumstances, the company's growth plans and ongoing operations could be adversely impacted. Yeah, so basically, they're saying that, one, the hash rate goes way up, right, where it makes it hard for them to earn money, but I don't think that's going to be a problem, I think, even if the hash rate goes up 50%, so does the difficulty, obviously. They're still going to be profitable with the miners coming online and the miners that they have right now. I th right now. Uh, so that may be a problem, and then, obviously, they may also have to... Um, reduce the shareholder value by obviously issuing more shares uh, to make the payments that they need to qualify for all these uh, purchases. And I think that's all I had here. So it's not a bad quarter. They did obviously, I think, make a mistake there. Uh, the good thing is they got new miners coming online. There's a lot of details here. You guys can get into it. But I do think it's a positive quarter other than the mistake that they made. Um, and then we'll have just have to see where everything goes from here. When they get the miners installed, when they're online, when they're profitable, what the price of Bitcoin goes, what the difficulty is. So there's a lot of variables in there. Um, so we'll just have to keep an eye on it. But it's obviously a nice beat uh, as far as revenue goes. Uh, the per share loss is a little bit higher than I would have liked to see, 10 cents. But I think once they start uh, prepaying all this stuff down and and possibly not investing as heavily, and they can actually start making money on it, and, and depending on when they sell Bitcoin. So that's a huge, there's a lot of ifs here. But I do think the stock has room to run. I think we'll see maybe getting up to new highs this year um, by the end of the year, depending on where Bitcoin is, obviously. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think.
did I catch the right mistake? Did I do the right thing, or am I just completely off? I think, I think I'm okay on this. I don't want to, you know, raise alarm bells all over the place that they made a mistake. It's it's an unaudited mis uh, unaudited earnings report, so I think they'll probably catch it in the long run. And just let me know what you guys think. And that's all I have for you guys. Overall, not a bad quarter. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it, obviously, going forward. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Until then.